Hi, this is John Cole with OKRaw.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. And in this episode, I'm going to explain to you guys my specific diet. Now, I'm not going to say that you should eat the diet I'm eating or that your diet's not good enough. You know, the main message of this episode is to teach you guys that are interested in how to eat more vegetables and fruits in your diet and how to eat a more nutritious diet no matter where you are in your journey maybe you're into a raw foods diet now maybe you're into a plant-based diet now maybe you're into a fruit-based diet now I don't really care what I care about is sharing with you guys how I've how I eat and how you guys could eat and how even if you incorporate just one of the tips that I share with you guys in this episode I believe it will be quite beneficial uh, you know, this video is a long time in the making. My diet has evolved and changed over the many years. I've been involved in eating a raw foods diet, which is what people would classify me as. And, you know, I don't know if I like labels because labels don't really explain what exactly you do. There's many people who are into raw food diets that are on YouTube that are raw this week. And then a couple weeks later or a couple years later, they're no longer raw because they say it didn't work, it had deficiencies, and I didn't feel good, my brain was messed up, and I didn't. I had these health issues, you know, so I'm not going to comment on any of them. What I will share with you guys is that literally I've been on this path since 1995, eating a raw foods diet, and I've been modifying and changing and adjusting my approach all the time during over all those many years to make my diet even better, in my personal opinion, and more importantly... Uh, to suit me and my lifestyle and what I feel I need in life. You know, of course, if you're at a different life stage, you may need to eat a little bit differently than I eat. But what I will say for you guys is that I want all you guys out there, no matter what your diet now, I want you guys to eat more vegetables. That is the main message of this episode. Regardless whether you want to eat a high vegetables or higher fruit or lower fruit or whatever, I want you guys to eat more vegetables. They are nutritional powerhouses, and it is quite sad that if you're just looking at the standard American person, less than 10% of standard Americans eat their recommended five servings of vegetables a day. Now, I make up for all those people that are not eating their vegetables a day because I overeat my vegetables a day. I probably get upwards of 20 to 30 servings of vegetables a day, which some people may find completely insane and undoable and unrealistic. <laughs> that being said, I've always been glad to be a little bit odd and different, and I'm doing what I feel is right. And if you guys are doing whatever you feel is right, it's working, hey, keep it up. That being said... I'd encourage everybody out there to incorporate more vegetables in their diet, all right? So with that being said, the three parts of this episode are number one, I'm just going to be talking with you guys for a little bit about my diet, about my thoughts about diet, all this kind of stuff. Uh, second, I'll be actually showing you guys actually what I eat in a day, literally. <laughs> I'm going to put it out on this table and explain what I eat. And the third part, which is interesting, is we're going to go ahead and get my laptop out. I'm going to pull up chronometer and show you guys a pretty much graphical representation of all the different nutrients and all the different foods I eat in a day that you would have just saw previously and what I eat in a day with, with everything pretty much on the table for the most part. And please be aware that every day changes. It's never exactly the same, although it varies a little bit. But at present time, I'm showing you guys how I eat in a day generally, um, which is you know varies depending on... This day I might eat my vegetable soup, this day I might eat a salad, this day I might eat jackfruit, this day I might eat berries. But this is a representative day on how I've been eating since the COVID <laughs> lockdown. I have not been traveling as much, and when I travel, of course, I probably eat a little higher fruit than vegetables because I, well, sometimes will travel with my juices, but sometimes I won't. And generally, when I'm on the run more, I grab more fast and easy and convenient foods and, you know, the way I eat vegetables is it's not entirely fast, easy, and convenient for many people. Um, but I find it works for me, and I'm actually quite happy doing what I'm doing. All right? So first, I want to talk about raw foods and my specific diet. So in raw foods, I think it's a travesty that the two main ways of eating a raw foods diet are either you eat high fruit or you eat high fat. Those are the only two options, this hand or this hand. Well, hey, what if there's a third option or a fourth option, right? 
I want you guys to open your eyes to different options out there and not just think literally in the box of how many raw food teachers may teach you. They may teach you, you got to eat fruit to get your calories because calories in fruit is about 300 calories per pound of fruit and that would take you about, you know, seven pounds of fruits to basically meet a 2100 caloric need, you know, so you could easily do that and now you're not going to be increasing your fat content that much because you don't want to go over that almighty 10% calories of fat because otherwise you might be eating too much fat. <laughs> Meanwhile, we have other camps, you know, of raw foodists that like, oh, fruit, that's bad, man. It's too much sugar. Can't eat the sugar, man. Causes cancer growth. Well, I'm not going to discuss that point, but here's the thing. You know, then they eat high fat, so then they could start putting on coconut oil and olive oil and eating a lots of nuts and seeds with maybe a little bit of vegetables and maybe a little bit of berries, right? And then you could get all your calories that way because, you know, uh, Oil, for example, is 120 calories per tablespoon. So literally, after about 20 tablespoons, maybe like, I don't know, 18, 15, 18 tablespoons of oil, that can be all the calories you need in a day. <laughs> so once you start dousing your salads with oil, man, you're getting definitely more calories from oil than the vegetables because the vegetables, what they don't tell you is vegetables are about 100 calories on average for vegetables, you know, lettuce could be less, leafy greens are less, you know, per pound. So for example, if you're eating a vegetable-based diet, you would literally need to eat 20 pounds of vegetables or 20 pounds of lettuce, which would probably take this whole table up, or you could eat seven pounds of fruit to get your calories. Now, we don't live in an absolute world, if you guys haven't noticed, everything's always give and take, pros and cons. And most people, hopefully, they don't eat seven pounds of only fruit or only 21 pounds of only vegetables or whatever amount of oil or fat or nuts and seeds you would eat. I want you guys to eat a balanced diet with the portions of, you know, uh, fruits, vegetables, and healthy fats, which I consider nuts and seeds, maybe some avocado and coconut, but not the oil. I do not consider that a healthy fat to eat to make up your caloric needs. And, you know dominant most raw foodist people out there that call themselves a raw foodist get their calories from fruit right and my personal opinion is that over the long run this is not the best or ideal diet for us to get the majority overwhelming majority of your calories from fruits so say you're eating only fruit and it's just a pure fruitarian who's only eating fruit with no vegetables you know, that could work for a number of years. I've only ever met one person that really eats a significant quantity of fruit with actually very little vegetables in his diet, who's, I believe, to be pretty healthy, although I haven't seen any kind of test results from him um, to prove that. But in general, high fruit diets, you know, they fail because you're not getting all your nutritional needs uh, met, you know. Um, and here's the other thing that I believe strongly in, that every different food on the entire planet, whether it's a leafy green, a vegetable, a stem vegetable, a fruit, or a nut, or a seed, they all contain different levels of phytonutrients, phytochemicals, micronutrients, trace minerals, all these different things. Foods are not just calories or carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, right? It is the micronutrients, these trace nutrients that are in the food that are so essential for our health. And let's not even forget, I've even talked about the beneficial fiber, both the sible fiber and the insible fiber. The sible fiber, if I had to choose a fiber that's more important, I would choose the sible fiber because that's a fiber that literally feeds our microbiome, which is so critical for our health in this day and age. Of course, yeah, the insible fiber, also important, so that actually you could kind of keep your um, you know, stools regular and whatnot. So I like to incorporate all these different nutrients, and my goal is to eat for phytonutrients, not eat for calories. That's a very important distinction between how I eat as a raw foodist and how most raw foodists eat. They're just worried about getting their calories because they need this many calories, and whether it comes from bananas and dates or whether it comes from papayas and pineapples, they don't really care because it's all about the calories. So, you know, I'm staunchly against simply eating for calories. I mean, you could pour white sugar on stuff. You could eat a Big Mac and get your calories. I mean, geez, they have these Big Macs or I don't even know what kind of burgers they have these days, but they're like a thousand or two thousand calories in one meal. <laughs> one meal.
<laughs> well, supersize me, all right. Meanwhile, you know, I have to, I do eat a lot of produce to get all my calories in because while I do eat some fruit, and especially when I was younger, I ate a higher fruit diet, but now I'm finding as I get more mature, as I've learned more, I've learned really the power are in the vegetables, and now my goal is to maximize my vegetables, get as many calories as I can in from vegetables, and then fill in with fruit for the excess you know, cal my excess caloric need that I did not meet with the vegetables. And you will see how this turns out in a little bit. So I want to let you guys know there are infinite possibilities and infinite ways to eat and structure your diet based around fruits, leafy greens, vegetables, stem vegetables, and fats. And that I want you guys to find the balance for you, depending on your age, your activity level, the nutrition that you're getting or not getting, you know, can be very important. I am strongly a believer in the value of variety. Eating a big variety of fruits and vegetables on a regular and everyday basis. So last night I had yellow dragon fruit. I don't eat that too much. A couple weeks ago I had the golden berries or poha berries. And I had like the jackfruit two days ago. I, had, I usually have berries almost every day. Some days I don't. I had some red pears today, which I don't only really get during the season, and actually they're actually decent for being store-bought organic red pears. I'm always striving to eat different foods. When foods are ripe in my garden, I'm eating seasonally, so I'm eating a lot of water spinach right now. I'm eating Malbar spinach, and most of you guys haven't even eaten those leafy green vegetables. In a few months, I'm not going to have those vegetables once it gets cold, but then I will have things like my... Siberian kale and my dinosaur kale and my Apollo Napa cabbage and my different red lettuces. So I'm always eating a variety of foods because each different food has a whole spectrum of different phytonutrients and phytochemicals, vitamins and minerals that are important for us. And if you're restricting your eating by only eating bananas and dates or only eating bananas, dates and romaine as extreme examples, you know, you're not going to get the nutrients in wild blueberries from Canada. You're not going to get the anthocyanins in those foods. You're not going to get the betalanes from beets that could help produce nitric oxide if <laughs> your beets have the, um, uh, the, 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 the right, was grown in the right fertilizer, basically. Check a link down below for a video I did on nitric oxide production and why a lot of beets won't basically give you the nitric oxide production you guys are looking for and won't give you the benefits because of the fertilizer that's being, that they're being grown with, right? So I've learned a lot of these things over the years, and it, it's just so important to me to share this with others, right? That there are more than just fruit or fat-based raw food diets. You know, matter of fact, many years ago, I'll put a link down below to that video, I made a video with my friend Kailash. Now, Kailash, he gets his videos from grains. So he eats an Ann Wigmore-style diet where, you know, he eats a little bit of fruit, and he eats a bunch of vegetables, but he also eats grains, which are also calorically dense, you know, and now I'm coming out with a video, literally a vegetable based raw foods diet. People think you can't do it, but I have shown how you can do it. I'm going to show the guys how you guys can do it if you choose to. Now, yes, I will say it's a little bit of work to do that. I mean, it's a, it's work to sprout your grains and eat them if you want to be a raw or a living foodist and eat sprouted grains, you know, to get some of your calories every day. And it's also work to go out and grow your fruit trees or go hunt and find all the fruit you're going to need to eat. So, you know, each one of these is a pro and a con. So I want you guys to find out what works the best for you. I mean, I have a friend that lives in Maui and he lives on his fruit orchard, 10 acres, and he grows all his own fruit. And basically he just eats mostly fruit because that's what he has and that's what he's growing. He doesn't have a vegetable garden, but he doesn't really like to eat vegetables, right? And so that's what he does. You know, me, I prefer to juice because it allows me to maximize the amount of vegetables I can eat, upping my caloric needs from vegetables instead of fruit, and also in including more of the valuable phytonutrients than most sweet fruits would. Um, and then in addition, also making that digestion of those vegetables easier for me. And I know some of you guys are going, John, juicing is not natural. Well, neither is cooking, neither is the way you guys' this fruit is being grown either. If you guys looked into it, if you're not buying organic fruit, it's being grown with synthetic um, chemical fertilizers and pesticides, which are not good for us. If you look into the topic of conventional fertilizers growing fruit, 
you will find that it can imbalance the nutrients in the fruit because basically what's in the fruit is what's in the soil and if the soil is being focused on three main minerals NPK you know then the fruits are going to only absorb what's in what's what is being fed what's being fed to it right so you're going to have yeah you're going to have a nice fruit that might taste sweet but it's going to be lacking in more most importantly the trace minerals and then even beyond that people don't understand that the the food soil web is incredible and the 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 reactions and all the things that happen between the root zone and the microbes and the fungi and the bacteria in the in the soil and then the nutrients that the plant takes up and then how you know certain minerals in plants are required for certain processes to happen in the plant for it to create different plant metabolites which I would call phytochemicals or phytonutrients which then determine how much nutrition is in the crop so that's why it's important for me to do something like bricks testing because that's actually an easy way to at least get some kind of ballpark idea of the nutrition in the food you're actually eating than not. Um, and so for that reason, I grow my own food, which is also you know a good portion of my diet. Every day I'm eating something that I grew out of my garden, either in the juice form or in my daily salad meal. So I want you guys to eat a variety of different foods and get the highest quality right and try to get it most back to nature as possible like my friend that lives on his 10 acres he grows everything in a natural method by doing composting and adding in rock dust and adding the soil microbes and you know making sure that whole system works so he's going to get the most ideal balanced fruit right he also doesn't spray pesticides pesticides spraying pesticides number one makes your food toxic in my opinion but number two it also discourages the plant to make its own natural pesticides a plant's natural pesticides are also known as phytonutrients for us. You know, when plants are stressed out, they create more nutrients in there for us that are actually highly anti-aging. So it's a good thing to eat some of my stressed out vegetables that are under water stress because I'm not watering them enough because those, those um, you know, leaves are going to be more potent. For example, you know, I mean, dry farm grapes or dry farm tomatoes taste so good and that's because the plant is under threat and it's actually shoving in more of these phytonutrients to protect itself against the elements and then when we eat those nutrient when we eat those fruits or vegetables we get those benefits into us as well so if you guys want a really good resource for eating you know not just a high fruit or a low fruit or a high fat or a low fat but a nice balanced approach of raw foods I would encourage you guys to get the raw food nutrition handbook by my friends Dr. Rick and Karen Dina, uh, mostly Karen. <laughs> I'll post a link down below to the Amazon so you guys could buy that on there and that'll describe a more balanced approach to raw foods in my opinion. Um, you know, and I don't eat like Karen or Rick either. They eat differently than I eat. <laughs> but I would definitely, of all the different raw food approaches, I think theirs is the most balanced for sure. All right, so the next part of this video, let's go ahead and show you guys what I eat in a day. All right, so at present time, this is what I've been eating in a day. I've been actually quite regimented, and I don't know that I'm always regimented, you know, if I'm home and not traveling, then I'm a bit more regimented than if I'm traveling and flying here and flying there and having to get more stuff done, but because I've been home and not, you know, going out as much as I used to or traveling, I have more time to prepare my food, which I normally do in big batches. So I do meal prep where I'll make, you know, um, four or five of these guys in a day. I'll vacuum seal them. These lids are no longer available, so I don't know where you guys can get them. These guys are uh, Solgit lids, um, so I can vacuum seal my juices and meals. So th this was made a few days ago, and then I made this one actually like yesterday, and then I made this a few days ago as well. So I basically just will sit and make like a gallon or two gallons of juice and just bottom up into 32 ounce servings. Actually, the, the jar is 32 ounces, but I only fill it to like 30 ounces or I can't put the vacuum lid on. And so that's how I eat, basically. So a lot of my meals up to here, actually, are vegetable-based. Yes, there are some fruits in there, but all these meals are vegetable-based. First, second, third, fourth, all vegetables, then followed by a little bit of fruit, okay? So let me go ahead and explain what I eat in a day. Number one, I have this guy right here, and this is my turmeric ginger a ginseng, rosemary leaf, and lemon juice. 
and there's about five ounces in here. I just I don't measure, but I basically measure the jar up. So these are eight ounce wide mouth jars. I felt about five ounces of just this straight juice. So it's like usually it's mostly ginger because ginger is pretty cheap, organic at um, Whole Foods, like two ninety nine a pound. But lately, like Costco had some organic turmeric for like at nine dollars a pound. So then I've been I might go away pretty soon, and it's good like Hawaiian kind red Hawaiian red turmeric that doesn't taste strong um, so I basically just juice all that in here I put a link down below to the video if I remember on how I make this recipe uh, lately I also got I get ginseng like the root grown in this one was grown in Canada I juice in there that stuff tastes like but <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> but it's good for you all right so that's the first thing when I wake up I might drink a little bit of water um, but generally I try not to drink a lot of water but generally I drink about a liter of water 500 milliliter in the morning 500 at night and then I'll have this juice first thing. Well, not first thing, but I usually get up and then I'll work until at least noon or one or two. And that's when I'll have my first juice of the day. Then pretty much shortly thereafter, the first juice, which is my turmeric, ginger, ginseng, rosemary, leaf juice, which tastes rather strong. Most people aren't going to like that, which is a herbal tonic, I would call it. Um, you know, it is rich in different kind of phytonutrients. Maybe not getting a lot of calories from that juice, but it is really rich in curcumin. Oh, I also put black pepper in there and a lot of different cool properties from those very powerful root vegetables. Okay. Then don't wait too long. Then right after that, then I drink my green juice. Every day I get a green juice. Green juice always varies depending on what I have in my garden. I don't have a lot of kale or anything in my garden right now. So this time of year, and see, I put in water spinach, although this this juice doesn't have water spinach because it's a juicing demo I made. But uh, in general, my green juice consists of these ingredients in different varying amounts. It contains zero fruit. It contains cucumbers, celery, water spinach, or other leaves out of my garden. Uh, sometimes basil, sometimes mint, and also the uh, organic romaine hearts. So this is a combination of those. Generally, it's either um, one-to-one -one romaine uh, cucumber and celery um, but sometimes I have more celery like this one's mostly celery with a little cucumber and uh, I didn't put any of the greens in there this time because I was making a video but otherwise it'd be like greens from my garden so I usually like make uh, about four of these quarts at once I pick a hundred Malbar or the water spinach leaves out of my garden then juice like a, a six pack of organic romaine hearts then I might juice like two to three, four heads of organic celery, and I might juice anywhere from two to five organic cucumbers or hothouse grown cucumbers. That's my green juice. And I want to let you guys know that basically the equivalent of juice, approximately, this is on average, you know, um, one cup of juice is one pound of vegetables. So literally in this jar, which is, I'll say it's 32 ounces, but it's probably a little bit less, maybe 31, 30 it's basically about four pounds of vegetables in there. So literally I'm getting four pounds of vegetables in here. So four times a hundred approximately, it's 400 calories, you know, literally in this one juice. Or you could eat like one pound of fruit, but I'm eating four pounds of vegetables instead in its juice form. So you might, John, juicing is unnatural. I mean, I kind of covered this earlier, but when you juice, you keep the soluble fiber. Soluble means dissolves in water. So you're not removing all the fiber out of the vegetables. That being said, I would not, nor would I want to eat four pounds of vegetables in the in the morning or in the afternoon. Actually, as my first meal, because it, it just it's a lot of volume, and I don't want to deal with all that volume. I want to get the nutrients out of the vegetables, and it's the juice of the fiber that feeds you is what the juice man said, Jay Cordich, right? So literally, I'm just getting all the phytonutrients, the vitamin, the majority of the phytonutrients, vitamins, and minerals out of the out of those vegetables into my juice that then I get to enjoy and drink in a simple format. Don't just chug this stuff down, guys. Take your time and drink it nice and slowly and leisurely, okay? The next juice I have is then my root juice. So I predominantly try to get this to have as many purple carrots as I possibly can. And if I could buy purple carrots in endless supply easily, this would be mostly purple carrots with very few orange carrots. Unfortunately, I'm, it's not easy to purchase purple carrots. So this is predominantly 
orange carrots with some and maybe as many purple carrots and yellow carrots and white carrots as I could find. In addition, I have beets in here that I juice. In addition, I have sometimes parsnips in here um, and or gobo root or burdock root. Sometimes horseradish root goes in here. Sometimes various you know root vegetables such as radishes. I think I made a dandelion root one time. Um, rutabagas in here. Basically, any kinds of oh jicama always goes in here as well. Very excellent prebiotic food. You know, inexpensive as well. And then along with that, I might put in um, one lemon or lime, and then some apple and a pineapple for sweetness. Okay, but the majority is mostly this is a carrot-based juice with other roots in there because carrots are relatively inexpensive. Approximately sixty cents organic a pound that I get, and if you're just not even worrying about organic, you could get six dollars for twenty-five pound bag of non-organic carrots. You know here where I live. So this is a relatively inexpensive juice and you know my calories are coming from this because you know the root vegetables have more calories than like the leafy greens and you know I have a video I made you know maybe a month or two ago post a link down below why I would rather drink carrot juice instead of eat bananas and if you guys watch that video you'll clearly see that the, the carrot juice is significantly more nutritious than simply eating bananas. That being said I still eat bananas <laughs> every now and then. Okay, so this is where I'm actually up to today. I've had these three juices, and I'm actually quite hungry right now. So after this video, I'm going to eat basically uh, probably this or a salad I already have pre-made. But generally, I make some kind of salad or vegetable-based meal. You know, it could be like this. This is my pepper-based soup. I'll post a link down below to my video on how I make the pepper-based soup, which is basically I juice a whole bunch of red peppers or ripe peppers, mini peppers, peppers out of my garden, whatever, or tomatoes. If I don't have a lot of peppers to juice, then I might blend them up instead in a vacuum blender. And that basically makes the sauce or the soup base, which is basically a liquid. To that liquid um, bell peppers, I might add in you know, a little bit of miso, some nuts and some seeds, some taco seasoning, some seaweed powder, and other different various herbs and spices. Maybe some garlic goes in there, maybe some pomegranate, um, raw vinegar, 100% pomegranates, um, yeah, I mean that's, that's the basics there. And then I basically cut up lots of vegetables, so included like shredded zucchini sh or shredded chayote squash. I have greens picked for my garden this time of year. I have lots of basil, so there's lots of basil in there. I might have some malbar spinach in here. I might have some um, water spinach in here. In addition, I put in some mushrooms that have been heat processed by me, in addition to mushroom powder in the, uh, the soup base itself, I chop up like a red onion. So there's greens. I also put some soaked seaweed in there that's with the salt removed and some chopped um, living food olives that have probiotics in there. So I mean, I think that's the base. I mean, sometimes some cut up avocados in there. Once again, link is down below to see how I make this exact soup. Although sometimes I might have a salad. So the other day I made a salad with like organic um, but butter lettuce with... Uh, spinach and then I put in like uh, avocados, some kimchi and some fermented black beans that I fermented myself. Every day is a little bit different depending on what I'm eating but I really like this soup because it allows me to really ramp up the amount of peppers I'm eating which are one of the most important vitamin C rich foods. After I eat this then the next thing I do in the day is I eat a fruit meal. So lately because I have so many of them um, I, I've been eating berries, so generally I'll eat like three to four of these little packages, which are about six ounces each of berries. Just wash them and eat them plain and straight. Um, and yeah, berries are really rich in nutrients, especially the blackberries, even more rich in anthocyanins than the blueberries. Um, and sometimes I don't have berries, sometimes I'll just eat more something like mangoes. The other day I had berries and then I had some mangoes too to fill in because I was still kind of hungry after the, after the blueberries. And then sometimes for dessert I might make some frozen banana sorbet by basically putting some frozen bananas through my pure juicer, which is like a champion juicer that basically mushes it all up. And then I'll put in, always when I do the banana ice cream, I just don't eat straight bananas generally. I always put in some wild blueberries to kick up my anthocyanin compound content. 
So this is how I generally have been eating. And once again, every recipe varies a little bit depending on what I could get, what I don't get. Sometimes it's more ginger, sometimes it's more turmeric. Sometimes this juice is mostly cucumber based with less of the other ingredients uh, because cucumbers were on sale that week or I got you know a better deal on the celery and the cucumbers were expensive. So now that week I'm using more celery. And then sometimes I just get, I'll do straight romaine juice sometimes because like, man, I love straight romaine, heart juice if I can't get like good cucumbers or celery. The root juice, always pretty much a carrot base with various other roots in there. And then my vegetable meal always changes. You know, I, I make this recipe a lot. I basically make a wild rice, which is bloom wild rice dish. Um, and then I make salads. And then I could have a fruit meal, which could vary. I also, I ate jackfruit the other day. I had you know, the yellow dragon fruit the other day. I got a bunch of pears, and actually when I was um, drinking this juice, or before I drank this juice, I was cutting up pears to dry, so I was eating a little bit of the pears before I drank this. It's always a little bit different, but as you guys can see, I mean, most of what I'm eating is on this side. It's mostly vegetables, and I'm literally concentrating them. So once again, four pounds of vegetables, four pounds of vegetables, eight pounds of vegetables, and maybe another, I don't know, that's not quite a pound of vegetables, maybe another half pound of vegetables right there. And then I weighed these out. This is about like one pound, 12 ounces of vegetables. So I mean, what do we got? We got like basically about 10 pounds of vegetables right here. So that's, you know, roughly, if you just want to do rough math, you know, it's about a, a thousand calories, maybe a bit more. Well, this actually has some nuts and seeds in there too. So that kind of jacks with the calorie content. And then the rest I get from my fruit. So I, per I think this is perfectly pretty healthy, but especially after putting my numbers in the chronometer, I generally do not track what I'm eating. And I'll be honest with you guys, after drinking this much juice and having this many vegetables, I'm really not that hungry for fruit. So sometimes eating a fruit meal, it's like, man, I got to get in my fruit today. I'm missing it, man. I got to eat it. And then I'm almost like, might be even overeating a little bit because I've already eaten so many vegetables, right? Maybe you don't want to be as extreme as I do. You maybe just want to do, you know, this much. You want to do a, a turmeric shot, a green juice, and then vegetables, and maybe eat a little bit more fruit. That's all right. I want you guys to find the balance that works for you. I will tell you guys, you know, I spend, you know, countless hours juicing, like, every week. I'll do, like, a session of one or two hours every few days to kind of, like, make a stock of these juices, a stock of these juices. I have this juice for tomorrow, then I'm out, then i got to make my green juice again in two days from now. I think I have like two more of these to drink in the fridge and I'm luckily out of these because I want to make a new recipe because I'm getting tired of eating my soup, uh, you know, on a, on a daily basis that I have been. And then fruits, depending on what's in season. The other day I got some peaches from the local farm that are actually quite good. So I ate the local peaches because they were going ripe. So here's my main eating plan and depending on what I'm getting is all dependent on the juices I'm getting, right? So my eating, my goal is to eat, number one, go to my garden to pick out the foods out of my garden to eat that first. Those are the most nutritious foods that I grew myself. Some foods money cannot buy, like special varieties of greens that they just don't sell, that have different phytonutrients. You know, I grow, most, I grow mostly purple basil, you know, instead of just standard green basil. And basil is not a good thing to buy at the store anyways because it wilts fast unless you're buying the whole fresh plant, but then they're super expensive. My next goal is to eat local. So then I'll go out to local farms. The farmers markets here kind of sucks. I'll go out to farms and buy produce fresh from other farms, eat that. And then beyond that, then I'll go to stores to buy organic produce. And my favorite of which is Costco and Sam's Club where I can get organic carrots for about 60 cents a pound. I also get the organic romaine hearts at Costco. It was $3.99 for six of them. The suckers raised the price to $4.99 for six of them, so it's not quite as good of a deal, but it's still decent. And then I'll just go to Sprouts and Whole Foods and even the dollar store to fill in, um, you know, to find the produce I need to get my juices made and then depending, and then I'll just, you know, buy peppers, you know, because I got to make my pepper soup if I'm going to make that. Um, and then, yeah, and then I just uh, fill in with maybe going to some Asian markets to get some non-organic food to fill in, to make my diet more interesting because not everything is available organic. So for example, jackfruit I'll buy non-organic because if I was waiting for organic jackfruit, unless I fly to Hawaii or my friends in Florida, I wouldn't be eating jackfruit. All my berries always are organic. So I would say actually how I eat, I would call it opportunistically, you know. I eat whatever's in season, whatever I can get locally, and then I fill in with other basically 
foods that are on sale as long as I'm, you know, always eating a variety of different foods, especially my vegetables. I strive to rotate and eat new and different ones that I never bought before and then as well as my fruits. So I'm going to go ahead and get this stuff back in the fridge because some of this stuff I'm actually eating tomorrow and I don't like to keep it out of the fridge. Very important when you, if you do pre-make food in bulk, I do encourage you guys to vacuum sieve it, save it. So pull out the extra oxygen so the, the, new, the phytonutrients, especially the antioxidants, will not oxidize. Um, these vacuum lids are no longer available, but you guys can get these soul get lids. I also have some videos post down below on how you guys could vacuum seal your juices uh, using a vacuum blender or just using a standard mason jar food saver adapter with a pump that's like five bucks. So literally you could be vacuum saving your meals for like 15 bucks, you know, at the most. Um, or, you know, this kit I think is about 20 bucks to get these special tops. But these tops don't pull as much vacuum on them as I would like. All right, so the last part of this episode, I actually want to go over the, the nutrients or the common nutrients that are characterized through something like chronometer. I don't generally do chronometer or fit day to track what I'm eating because I have done this for so long. You know, um, and I guess another question you guys might have, what time do you eat, John? Well, I eat when I'm hungry. So like that's the most important thing to me is like respect my body and give it what it needs when I want it, not at specified times. Oh, it's noon, I gotta eat lunch. Like, I don't even start eating any food until about noon or one or sometimes two if I'm like busy working. I'm not like, oh, it's noon, I gotta eat. But if, I'm, if I wake up and around noon I'm hungry, then it's like, all right, I'm waiting for my, my first juice of the day around noon. And then sometimes I gotta make my juice before I can even drink it. So then that comes into play as well if I don't have everything pre-made like I do um, for tomorrow, for example. So I know some of you guys are thinking, John, how could you possibly get all the nutrients you need from your vegetables, man? You don't have any grains, you don't have any milk, you don't have any meat in there, right? Well, amazingly enough, the vegetables are really rich in nutrients as well as calories if you eat enough of them. And, you know, think about if you are eating animals, where does the animal get its protein from, right? The animal gets its protein from the vegetables it eats, right? I prefer to eat the vegetables in quantities that animals would eat <laughs> so I could get the nutrients I need from the vegetables as well as some fruits and other limited foods depending on when I eat them. You know, majority of what I eat is vegetables. I then eat some fruits. I will also eat some mushrooms, eat some certain select grains such as, you know, buckwheat, some oatmeal sometimes. And this is all, you know, raw, uncooked. I also do heat process things like mushrooms. I will heat process beans and then for lactic acid ferment them. So now they are a living food. So I now can get some more beans in my diet. I also eat things like natto and uh, unpasteurized tempeh whenever I am able to get it. I definitely think that eating some legumes is quite essential. And it's not good to limit yourself or put yourself in a box no matter what box that may be. Uh, you know, in this case, we're talking about dietary boxes, okay? So uh, anyways, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and look into my chronometer and kind of go over what I'm eating, and I'll explain more about it. I think we're just going to go ahead and do a close-up of the screen. It's All right, so looking at the chronometer here, um, I basically entered in roughly all the different foods I'm eating um, in a day, and their whole amount. So for example, on chronometer, you know, they might have carrot juice, but they're not gonna have my ginger, turmeric, ginseng, rosemary leaf shots. If you look up some kind of shots, ginger, turmeric shots on chronometer, they always have orange juice or added water, and that's because manufacturers, when they're making them, it's a lot cheaper to add orange juice or water, whereas I'm drinking it straight. Um, likewise, you know, my specific juices, you know, if it's celery juice, you could find that in chronometer, but my specific juices with all the different mixture of greens and celery and cucumbers and even water spinach, it's, there's no listing for juice in there. So instead what I'm doing, I'm putting the approximate amount of vegetables I'm using, um, in to make the juice and figuring, you know, Best case scenario, I'm getting all the nutrients out when I juice it. That being said, I don't believe that to be entirely accurate. I believe I'm getting approximately 80%, 75 to 80%, potentially as high as 90%, depending on the vegetable I'm juicing, 
of the nutrition and the calories out of it. So this will not be entirely accurate. The calories may be off by, you know, 20%, for example. Um, but in general, uh, we're going to go down this list so you guys can see my ginger root raw, 8 ounces of fresh uh, ginger root. Uh, when you juice it, it uh, turns in it turns out to be about a half cup of juice or about four ounces. They had no fresh turmeric in there, so I just put two ounces of ground turmeric. And then I put like, you know, one eighth of a medium or a, a, a certain wedge of a lemon, because that's kind of what in there, and I forgot to put the rosemary. So you can see already just in my first shot of the day, approximate calories are, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, this seems a little bit high to me, maybe like 200 calories in that little juice, because the ginger, you know, pretty calorically dense there. Next, so uh, the next couple items, including the cucumbers with peel, 16 ounces or one pound of cucumbers, that will equal about one cup of juice. As you saw, my juices are about four cups total. To make another cup of juice, two cups of juice, that's about uh, 16 ounces of romaine, An another uh, cup of juice, that's two cups. And then we have uh, celery raw, 32 ounces, that's about another almost two cups approximately, and then eight ounces of water spinach, which is fairly realistic on the um, amount of uh, greens in my green juice. And these are all examples, for example. And you can see this juice already is like, uh, what is it? 150, uh, 200, maybe three, another 300 calories of juice maybe, 400 calories somewhere. Then we go to the carrots, and this is actually where a good amount of calories are coming from. I mean, two pounds of carrots are 371 calories. If you just ate the carrots, that being said, I'm juicing them, so the calories probably aren't going to be that high because I'm like giving some up with the fiber, but I'm getting most of the nutrition out of them. Um, so like, you know, comparing, you know, carrots, a lot more calorically dense, 371 for 32 ounces versus 30 ounces of celery for only 119, so that's really where the bulk is. In addition, the roots, or the beets, also more calorically dense. Um, 16 ounces of uh, beet root, which is about one pound, equals once again one cup of juice. So this is about uh, two cups of juice, one cup of juice, that's three cups, and then about another 16 ounces or another pound of jicama. And then I'll basically top it off at about uh, four pounds of produce. And you guys can see in this juice, Literally just between the carrots, beets, and jicama, 300 plus 200 is 500, 600, 700 calories. I don't know if I completely agree with that. <laughs> but it's definitely calorically dense. And then, of course, I put a little bit of pineapple in there. And I do my juices in batches, so these are just, you know, rough numbers. Because I put one pineapple when I make like a gallon or two gallons of juice. And then, so then maybe in one juice there's a little bit of pineapple in there so that's like why it's only two slices <laughs> and then one apple because I put like a number of apples in my juice as well so then that's like uh, the juice and once again these will not be completely accurate to what they are up to this point you know because all this is juiced and the calorie counts will not be completely accurate because I may be only getting 70 to 80 percent of the calories that are in there although I, I believe I'm getting the majority of the nutrition the next set of ingredients are some of the ingredients that go in my soup every day. I make the soup, for example, the ingredients vary, so this would be like 1.66 small zucchinis because it's shredded, and then mainly it's pepper juice because it's basically uh, two pounds of peppers create about 16 ounces of juice. And then I have some Malbar spinach for my garden, a little bit of miso in with the dressing, Brazil nuts for my selenium. Blend it up with the pepper juice along with the flax in there for the omega 3s. Blend it up and then also have a little bit of taco seasoning in there. And then I think, uh, I think that's all the oh, and then I, I, I put in down here like some uh, garlic, one clove that's also in there. Blend it up as well. Other ingredients may go in there, but this is the basics. And then uh, in the soup itself, the fixings in the soup would be like artichoke hearts, not too many. These are a heat processed food that I choose to eat. Uh, they are high in antioxidants despite being heat processed and I love artichokes as a child. And then uh, yellow corn frozen. I, I get organic um, from Costco or Trader Joe's usually and then I get organic peas frozen and just a little bit goes into my soup just to kind of give it some texture and especially on the 
to give me some more nutrient variety, especially the peas, which is a legume technically, and the corn, you know, also adds a little bit of calories in there, but also a nice uh, flavor in there. I do take some mushrooms that I then um, will heat process myself, 15 minutes and my pressure cooker is good enough, and then I basically just put them in my soup. In addition, I put a little bit of seaweed salad in there, uh, mixed seaweeds every day, it's a little bit different, I think I put nori in this last batch. In addition, I might put, you know, a bunch of uh, natto in there when I make the big batch, so maybe just uh, one ounce total. And then uh, watermelon seeds get blended up into the dressing, uh, so I have some healthy fats along with the flax seeds and the Brazil nuts. Of course, this also changes. Sometimes I'll use macadamia nuts. Very, not too often I'll use cashews. I also use pistachios. I use a lot of black walnuts lately. And uh, whatever kind of nuts and seeds I have on uh, at the time, so you know my seeds aren't always the exact same. Neither are the ingredients. Sometimes I don't have the artichoke hearts. I might put a little bit more corn. I might put more greens out of my garden. I might shred up some cucumber, shred up some chaote squash. But I don't have the you know zucchini to make. But this is my general recipe. But once again, check the link down below for my recipe on my soup I make. And then I might cut up a little avocado. Put it in there as well for some nice texture and some nice added fat. And then chop up uh, onion as well. Goes in the, the soup um, fixings as well as the basil. Alright, moving down, uh, maybe after I have my soup, I wait a couple hours when I get hungry again, then I'll have some fruit for the day. I try to do berries whenever possible, although sometimes I just don't feel like eating berries. I prefer blackberries, although I will eat any kind of berries I can get my hands on. Uh, once again, I find what's on sale and what's organic. Right now I have blackberries. I had some raspberries a couple weeks ago. I also got blueberries, which I'm not a big fan of, although they do store longer than blackberries, which is nice. I might eat something like uh, the Cape gooseberries, or also known as poha berries or golden berries sometimes. Um, could also eat strawberries, for example, and I'll usually have about a pound of those. Contributes about 195 calories. And then I'll have, a, and then after I eat my fruit meal, if I'm still hungry before I go to bed, then I might have a little bit of dessert. And then um, I have some frozen bananas, two bananas or so, basically put through my uh, juicer with a blank plate to process into frozen sorbet. I'll put one banana in, then I'll put a whole bunch of wild blueberries, and then I'll put the last banana in, um, you know, that I'll basically give my banana ice cream some, um, you know, phytonutrients, purple phytonutrients from the wild blueberries, which don't add a lot of calories, as you guys could see, but, um, you know, have the anthocyanins that are quite important. All right, moving on down, if we look at my calorie uh, summary here, looks like it came out as 3208. Um, I do not believe this to be entirely accurate because a lot of the produce is being juiced, so I definitely will lose maybe 20% of those calories right off the top maybe even more, um, and then uh, the calories burned according to my weight and size and activity level, I need 2288 a day, and then this leaves me with a 921 surplus, that's if this calorie figure is accurate, which I believe it not to be because I'm pretty much maintaining my weight, and if we look at my overall macronutrients, you know, I had about 110 grams of protein, 387.7 uh, grams of carbs and 77.8 grams of fat on this specific day. Once again, I never do these ratios, but in general, I eat lots of vegetables, some fruit, and just some nuts just to kind of give some flavor to my sauce. And for those of you guys that are interested, because I know 80 10 10 is very popular, we can go to this little chart here. This is my overall macro ratio based around 387.7 uh, carbs. That's 67.4%, and then uh, protein is 110.1 or 19.1%, and then my fat is 77.8, which is 13.5% on my ratio. So if some people want to eat 80, 10, 10, you know, I personally think that maybe upping your protein a little bit is important, and 10% fat might be a little bit low for me. You know, I like to have a range anywhere between 10 to 20% fat, like max. I feel best around 15 uh, due to COVID, I've been eating actually a bit lower fat these days. So if you guys are interested in my overall percentages, that's what I'm eating well, on this day. And every day it changes a little bit. Let's go back to chronometer and take a look. And 
This is the most important part. Highlighted nutrients. Look at this. Most Americans do not eat enough fiber. I ate 538% of my fiber. I get 947% of my iron. Like, this is insane. I'm getting significantly more iron than a meat eater would. <laughs> it's probably getting absorbed better and it's not causing oxidative damage. You know, when you're eating heme iron, Right, you could accumulate too much iron in your blood cells and in your in your body, which is, could cause oxidation. That's why, like, if your car gets scratched and you live near the ocean, it's gonna rust. You know, luckily the iron uh, from plants are non-heme iron, so your body selectively absorbs it if it needs. I'm providing the iron my body needs if it wants to absorb it, and if not, it goes down the toilet bowl. Once again, calcium. I don't drink milk, but yet I have 221% of my calcium. These numbers are completely insane. You would not want to compare me to an average standard American diet eater because this will put them to shame. You know, so even without drinking milk, I'm getting over 200% of my calcium. This is because all the vegetables I consume, especially in their juice format. Vitamin A, pro-vitamin A, beta-carotene, 700 Actually, this is insane. 7,407 percent. Vitamin A is a very critical nutrient. Once again, I'm not eating preformed vitamin A. This is a vitamin A in the form of beta carotene that my body should convert if I don't have any genetic dispositions or mutations um, causing me not to convert my provitamin A beta carotene into the vitamin A. And from a recent blood test, it looks like I'm converting fine. And once again, if I have excess of the beta carotene, my body could store it in my skin. And that's why I might look a little bit more yellow <laughs> or orange <laughs> than others because of all the nutrients and carotenoids I eat. Which actually in studies, they show you can actually be more attractive to the opposite sex because you actually have some color in you. People might want to call this the raw glow, but that's just the carotenoids and the pigments that you're eating that's getting stored in your skin. That gives you sun protection from the inside. I do not slather on sunscreens pretty much at all. Maybe on a rare occasion I do, but I, I, I cover up with clothes and I have natural sun protection from the foods I eat. Vitamin C, look at this. 2,044% of my vitamin e C needs. Vitamin C is a critical nutrient to prevent oxidative damage. It is completely water soluble. If you do not use it, you pee it out. And on this nutrient, you know, there's always nutrients that we need that there's too much could be bad, too little could be bad, and we really want to just hit all our nutritional needs just right. But in water soluble nutrients anyways, in their whole plant form in a non-supplement manner, I'd rather do a little bit too much than not enough. And I'm not even sure that the US RDA needs of vitamin C is accurate for optimal or ideal health. Once again, vitamin C is a very important nutrient, especially for immunity in this day and age. Vitamin B12, right? I do supplement vitamin B12. You can see clearly my diet is not giving me enough B12. And that's actually if this is actually an even active form of B12. I surmise that the B12 I am getting is from something like the seaweeds that they claim to have B12, which may be analogs, which may not entirely be accurate. I do, in addition, take a B12 supplement, although there are also foods I eat that contain B12, and that's for another episode. I did not eat any of those foods in any large quantities uh, on this day, other than maybe potentially vegetables picked out of my garden that have the beneficial microbes on them, but that's a different topic but I do supplement nonetheless. Folate, 572% of my folate needs um, through my diet. This is because folate is in foliage or leafy greens and vegetables. Um, so going plenty of folate, and this is very important to prevent neuro tube defects if you're a pregnant woman. And I do not encourage you guys to take the folic acid, which is a man-made folate. I encourage you guys to eat your foods to get your folate. Easiest way to do that is through juicing. Juicing allows me to compress lots of vegetables into one juice where it's literally packed powerhouse of nutrition. Potassium, another very essential nutrient, 555% of my potassium. Um, because my potassium level is so high, we want to have a sodium-potassium balance. You know, I will sometimes crave a little more salt 
or sodium. I don't like to eat salt, so I will have some miso that contains some salt and or some sea vegetables that might contain some sodium in there, as well as my other foods. You know, the celery, for example, has plenty of sodium to balance out my potassium, and if you're not eating added salt and you're eating a healthy plant-based diet, your sodium potassium value should fall into place. All right, so you guys can see um, this is based on my targets, my percentages here. Um, you know, so we don't want to necessarily look at the percentage based on my targets, but you can see my water percentage is 156%. So I'm literally getting enough water from the foods I'm eating. I mean, geez, after all, I'm drinking so much juice, like 70 ounces of juice in a day. That's basically water rich. All the foods I eat for the most part, aside from the nuts and some of the seaweeds, are all water rich foods. So I really don't drink that much water. I prefer not to. I prefer to get my water from the foods I eat. You know, if we look at the carbohydrates, you know, lots of carbohydrates, getting lots of fiber, 538% of my fiber, a little bit of starch and, you know, a bunch of sugar in there. And then, uh, you know, 387.7 net carbs. Once again, these numbers are not completely accurate due to the fact that I do a lot of juicing and a lot of the produce I'm eating is juiced. So this is not going to be totally accurate, but it's actually at least a good guideline. The fat percentage, you know, uh, 77.8 over here. And the, the fat um, have a nice balance of monounsaturated to polyunsaturated. And important for me are the, my omega-3 to 6 balance. As you guys can see, I got 4.8 grams of omega-3s to 18.5 grams of omega-6. So you want to have a good balance of these guys. I basically have 300% of my, my omega-3s and 109% of my omega-6. When I did do an omega-3 to 6 uh, ratio test, my omega-6s were a little bit too high. So I've been trying to focus on ramping up my omega-3s, and so my omega-3 is a 300% of, I guess, the U.S. RDA or something. And then as you guys can see, I'm not eating any trans fats. Those are bad for you. Protein. You know, I've got 110 grams of protein on this day. Once again, not completely accurate because I'm juicing a lot of produce. But as you guys can see, my amino acid levels of all the different amino acids here which you could go over and talk about all, the, all of them. There's essential and non-essential amino acids. And as you guys can see, even something that like lysine that they say can be deficient in a plant-based diet, even with e eating very little beans or legumes, I still got 4.1 grams, 164% of my lysine. You guys could see where that's coming from, you know. Uh, getting good percentage from the carrots, a little bit from the basil, some from the sweet pepper. So that's really cool about chronometer. You could go over and highlight and see where you're getting those nutrients from. And if we go over this, right, you can see a lot of the nutrients I'm getting are from the carrots. I mean, carrots are a powerhouse of nutrition. I mean, all the, the carrots are always, oh, this one has the watermelon seeds for the methionine, but the carrots also high up there. You know, watermelon seeds, once again, you know, that's why we need to eat a little bit of nuts and seeds, in my opinion, you know, um, but yeah, the basil, wow, the basil has more tryptophan than the, than the, than the carrots or the watermelon. That's impressive. And, uh, you know, the carrots considerably come out on top. So that's quite interesting. Want to see where my carbs are coming from? Well, my carbs are coming from mostly the carrots and then the peppers next. And then maybe the bananas, if I do eat bananas that day. And then the blackberries, very, very interesting. And the fiber coming from the carrots, not exactly. That's completely off because... When you juice carrots, you remove about half the fiber. So really, the fiber on this should maybe be on my carrot should be about, you know, 12.2 um, grams. So that would drop it down. The blackberries are actually where I'm getting my fiber. The jicama, I have to look at the percentage when you juice it, how much fiber you're keeping. And of course, the peppers, not getting as much fiber on those either. Because um, a lot of those are eaten, you know, in their juice form. But juicing does keep a percentage of the fiber depending on the vegetable or fruit you're juicing. Over my vitamins, my vitamins are insane. Um, you know, the, let's talk about the ones that are not doing well. Vitamin D, <laughs> maybe my shiitake mushrooms, I'm getting maybe a little bit of vitamin D. It's 2%. Uh, my diet is not deficient in vitamin D because I go out in the sun. Every day I'm in the garden working outside, whether I'm in my outdoor kitchen, preparing food, getting sun on my naked skin, or whether I'm gardening, I make my own vitamin D. So supplementation is not necessary this time of year at all. B12, once again, 
uh, deficient, um, well, not 100%. Not uh, maybe I'm getting some from the seaweed, some from the miso, but I am not um, guaranteeing that. I do take a supplement in addition irregularly. Oh, and then I guess some, some nutrients may be problematic if you get too much. I guess they're saying folate may be a concern because I have 572%. Once again, this may not be entirely accurate because I am juicing the beets and the, and the peppers and the celery and the carrots, which are the highest levels of these. I'm getting only a percentage of the folate, but nonetheless, I'm still meeting all my folate needs. And as well as the other B vitamins, you know, I'm, I'm up there, you know, in excess of 100% of the nutrient requirements. Vitamin A, once again, this is not, this is not preformed vitamin A that you would get in something like fish. You know, this is beta carotene, so this is not, you know, doesn't have a toxicity like the regular vitamin A, and that's, that's greatly increased. Once again, vitamin C, look at that. Peppers. This is why I eat peppers. Peppers blow away basically most other foods in vitamin C, even oranges, yes. And so peppers are one of my favorite foods, and that's why I juice them so I can, can concentrate the amount of vitamin C I get, and I try to eat that throughout the day, although many foods have the vitamin C in there. Vitamin E, once again, peppers, you know, you're going to see a couple of trends, you know, peppers and carrots, you know, those are super nutritious and people like, you know, don't think too highly of them, especially carrots, like, oh, I hate carrots, carrots are so nutritious and that's why I love to juice them because you could literally crank up the volume of carrots, I mean, I, I could maybe eat a pound of carrots if I tried hard, if they were baby carrots and I had something to dip them in, but I just don't like eating carrots, so I'm so glad for juicers that allow me to basically concentrate the nutrition in the carrots and get them in a juice while keeping approximately 50% of the fiber. And the vitamin K, right? Vitamin K, very essential. Uh, basil, wow, I didn't know basil had that much vitamin K. The celery also has vitamin K in it. Quite impressive. Leafy greens generally have uh, lots of K. But also the natto I eat actually have has vitamin K2, which is not actually not, not on this chart. And I think also that's a very important essential nutrient. As to minerals, the common minerals, you guys can see my common minerals are just off the charts of the one that they're talking. They say, oh, vegans are deficient in zinc. Well, not according to me. And guess why? Well, the watermelon high in zinc, the watermelon seeds, the turmeric also. I'm not eating ground turmeric, so this is probably off. I have whole turmeric that's been juiced, but I am getting the zinc from that if the zinc is actually in that and fresh turmeric is going to have less zinc in it than ground turmeric because ground dried turmeric is more concentrated although I guess when I juice I do also concentrate the foods as well um, and then yeah sodium 247 percent so that might look a little bit high for some people but then also remember it's your sodium potassium balance um, and I'm getting plenty of sodium from my foods I guess the seaweed salad oh like the seaweed salad I eat, I just found seaweed salad in here. That's probably not completely accurate because I wash my seaweed salad to make sure there's very little leftover excess salt because most seaweed salads are, the seaweed salad I get is actually packed in salt, but I thoroughly rinse it out and put it under a vacuum in reverse osmosis water to pull the extra salt out of it before eating. So that's going to be, you know, we could drop off 665, but I am getting you know, a good portion of sodium from my celery. And then, of course, I'm getting selenium from the Brazil nuts, you know, which are at the super top. Probably don't need to even eat that many Brazil nuts, as well as a little bit from the shiitake. So it's very important to, you know, have a balanced diet where you're, you know, concerned about all these different nutrients. You know, once again, potassium, carrots at the top, phosphorus, carrots at the top, once again, sweet peppers, magnes, turmeric, and the wild blueberries. You know, this is why I eat a variety, because, you know, if you didn't eat a variety, it would be much harder to meet your numbers and, you know, without overeating too many calories. I mean, if you eat m enough of any one food, including 30 bananas a day, you could get some of these numbers pretty high, but, you know, it's going to be a lot, it would be a lot easier to eat a handful of nuts or, you know, or something like that to get certain nutrients than to overeat bananas, in my personal opinion. So, yeah, the calcium, wow, a lot of the calcium is coming from the basal. And, you know, the greens have lots of calcium, so I really want you guys to ramp up your greens. As you guys can see, I'm really meeting all my nutritional needs according to the chronometer, um, you know, on common nutrients. And, you know, so that's cool with me. But what is not cool for me is that 
most people are not aware of the uncommon nutrients or the trace elements or micronutrients, right? These are the things like the minerals that are not included on this chart, right? Um, there's so many other minerals, uh, you know, that are not on the chart, you know, periodic element, table of the elements, you know, there's all these elements and where do you get your platinum from? You know, do you even eat platinum? I mean, they have platinum-based chemotherapy. I take a lettuce powder that is supplemented with platinum in it, not very, very rarely actually. So I have some platinum because there are all different kinds of reactions in our bodies, enzymatic reactions that require different minerals and trace minerals and different phytonutrients. If you guys are missing some of these, it's like your engine is running on six cylinders instead of eight cylinders and it's not going to run perfectly. Everything in your body is not going to happen in a nice concert if half the concert is out due to COVID. You're not going to get the same exact music that you would if you had all the concert people playing with all the different instruments so the conductor can properly conduct the orchestra. So, you know, that's why I strive to have a variety of foods. And once again, this is one single day. Every day is different. You know, some days I might do standard blueberries instead of wild blueberries. Some days I'll do tart cherries, you know, in my banana sorbet. Some days I won't even use banana. I might just use berries or I might make a smoothie and I have all these different green powders that I'll include sometimes to kick up some of the different phytonutrients and trace minerals that may not be accounted for. You know, I'm really into the purple foods. And so in the end of this video, I want to, want to let you guys know that it is possible to eat a vegetable-based raw foods diet or even raw uh, vegetable-based plant-based diet. The main way I like to do that is through juicing, right? Juicing allows me to concentrate the amount of vegetables that I would eat to, to eat more than I normally would. Now, some people may consider this, you know, um, not natural. Um, you know, I would say that eating all this fruit is totally not natural. While we are designed to process and eat fruit, you know, I do not think that even, even our closest relatives, the bonobo monkeys out there, don't eat entirely fruit. They eat plenty of leaves as well. So I do think to have a properly balanced diet, you guys each need to find the appropriate amount of vegetables to eat compared to fruit, compared to a little bit of fat that I think most people would agree on unless you're into a high fat raw food diet into like gourmet stuff. You know, I think most people will not disagree that including more vegetables is generally always going to be a good thing unless you have some kind of allergies to vegetables. Then I would encourage you to find the vegetables you need to eat. I know some people might say, John, it's better to cook vegetables than to eat them raw. And, you know, in some cases, like with carrots or tomatoes, they say that you may get a greater uptake. But as you guys can see, my up, I don't need to worry about my uptake of certain nutrients because I'm eating such a quantity of these foods anyways. It, it's a moot point. And in addition, when you do cook certain, when you cook anything, you lose, you denature proteins, you lose antioxidants, you're, you're losing certain things but it may be allowing you to gain certain things at the, at the same time. So for example, you know, if I, I don't eat mushrooms raw, but I will heat process them. So now the benefits of their beneficial fibers and their phytonutrients and get the properties from them. You know, the majority of what I eat, as you guys can see from my chronometer is completely raw. Um, and so I encourage you guys to eat as much raw foods as you possibly can. Juice if you want. If you don't want, then you got to get your calories somewhere. Try to incorporate more vegetables. If you're just going to blend them up into smoothies, which I'm not a big fan of blending vegetables in a non-vacuum blender because that oxidizes some of the phytonutrients and those are the very compounds that I want the most, right? The vitamin C, the vitamin A, these can be denatured by a high-speed blender, but it is proven by science that when you do a vacuum blender, you will keep, you know, two to three times of certain antioxidant nutrients and this is also very important to me and that's also another reason why I use slow juicers instead of the high speed juicers that will not extract out some of these valuable phytonutrients as well. So this is a whole plan and scheme that I have on how I've dialed in my diet to eat how I am today. If you ask me in a year, am I eating the same thing that I'm making right now? Absolutely not. My diet's changed over the last 25 years, you know. This is the point in my life where I've eaten the most vegetables because predominantly over my career as a raw food as I've eaten more fruit and thought that maybe vegetables weren't as important but I'm really seeing now the benefits of the eating the vegetables because they are so phytonutrient rich and I want you guys to eat a variety because your microbiome is hungry for a variety of different fibers in all different types of foods whether that's fruits or vegetables 
even things like mushroom, I even eat kombucha scovies, which are rich in fiber as well. So eat more fiber, eat more phytonutrients, get a variety, eat more vegetables is how I'd like to sum this up. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit from this episode and hopefully after watching this episode, you guys are just going to start eating a few more vegetables. If you want to get a juicer to juice them, please be sure to check out my other YouTube channel, uh, Raw Foods, or uh, visit my website, Discount Juicers, where I do sell juicers for a living. I also sell vacuum blenders. I have a wealth of knowledge in many different videos on how to use some of these appliances so you guys can maximize the nutrients that you're getting into you and live sustainably and more importantly, healthfully on a raw foods diet so that you guys don't have to make a video, I'm no longer raw and now you're eating meat because I think I find that quite sad and I personally believe that to be a cop out because you're just following the wrong raw food path. You know, I think I'm probably the only guy, let me know if there's other guys online or girls that are eating a vegetable based raw food diet. It's actually extremely rare. I mean, I kind of take vegetables to the extreme. Might be better to let me back off some vegetables and eat some more fruits, but I feel good the way I'm eating and I wouldn't want to change at this point, although I might change in the future. So always be open to change and I encourage you to get blood tests and make sure that what you're doing is working for you and that you feel great and that your blood tests prove it. And if not, then make adjustments and change instead of, you know, not getting blood tests for years and all of a sudden you crash and burn because you've been eating an insufficient raw food diet and not getting enough variety and not eating enough vegetables which, and or eating too much fat, which could be some of the downfalls on a raw foods diet among the many others, all right? So if you guys enjoyed this episode, hey, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also, please be sure to share this with others on a raw foods diet that might be eating too much fruit. Maybe it'll get them to eat a few more extra vegetables. I think that could only be a good thing in my opinion, although I don't encourage anybody to go entirely vegetable-based or, you know, find the right balance for you in the end. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on my new and upcoming episodes that come out every five to seven days. You never know where I'll show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. I think I have a video coming up on how I make my coconut yogurt, which I didn't have any coconuts in this episode. I eat, or on this day, but I eat coke. I drink maybe some coconut kefir sometimes and I have some coconut yogurt maybe once every week or something like that. Keep things fun, get some probiotics in me, and uh, keep my diet mixed up with different foods coming in. Also make sure you click the little bell so you get notified as my new videos come out. And finally be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are wealth of knowledge. Over 500 episodes at this time on this YouTube channel dedicated to teach you guys how to eat a healthy raw foods diet. Um, you know I have many interviews with many long standing raw foodists with some excellent information so that you could dial in your diet to eat it the healthiest way possible. Which unfortunately in my opinion not many people on YouTube uh, that are raw foodists do. They, ha they are more tight cast into their specific cliques or groups and I try to get along with everybody and take the knowledge I need from each person and incorporate that into my own and find out what works for me by trial and error, by checking blood tests and checking in with my body and seeing how I feel. So with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time and until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always the best.